there. And today we're gonna go over this doctor van a customer had brought in. I think it's DR, Pa. What, what's that? It's called a DR? Uh, yeah. No, it's a doctor van, not a DR. Shut yeah. up. So a customer brought this in, was missing the hoses, missing the thing that goes to the to the tractor, the little chute that goes from the tractor to the blower. This was broke off. I welded that back on already. And uh, he said, you know, fix it up. And I said, okay. So then I went to doctor's website to look up the hoses and the chute and everything. And oh boy, about $500 for hoses and that to put this thing back together. So he said, oh man, I don't want to spend $500 on all that. He said, uh, you want to buy it, Terrell? And I said, sure, I'll buy it. So I bought it. Now it's mine. I own the doctor, the doctor back. So this is what I'm gonna do. Cause I already started doing it. And then I thought, hey Junior, we should do a video on this. And he said, I'll call Mr. Cameraman. So he called Mr. Cameraman. Hi Mr. Cameraman. So first thing I did is I had a six inch piece of duct work laying around. So I stuck that inside and I pop riveted it to the lid. Take the cover off back here. And you can see up in there. So what I did is I cut, I cut on the flange all the way around and then I bent it out and then I pop riveted it to the inside. See? So now I got something to hook a hose to. So I did that. And then I thought, well now I need a piece of hose to go from here to here. Because this thing's on here, so you can take it off. Luckily this one's here. So I thought, you know what? Give me a piece of six inch drain tile. Non-perforated drain tile. <laughs> yeah, that's a hose. Pretty heavy duty hose. Well, I'm gonna run that hose from here to here. So there's my hose. I don't have to buy it from the doctor. And then I thought, well, maybe I should put a 90 on here so the hose goes to the tractor. Because the way this thing works is you mount this thing solid to the back of your tractor and it pivots off these caster wheels. That's what makes it steer. You don't hook this like a hitch, like a trailer hitch. You have to mount this thing solid to the back of your tractor. And then when you turn your tractor, everything moves with it. So I'm gonna get me a piece of stove pipe, six inch stove pipe, because that's pretty heavy, 24 gauge. I go to Menards and get me a piece of 90 stove pipe, then I can mount it to here, and then I can hook this to it. Because I had this from some old track back. See, I save everything, I don't throw nothing away. I'll be able to hook that. I got a couple of different ones in these chutes, probably three or four. And then, oh, excuse me. I was looking at the motor. Of course, the motor don't run. It's been sitting forever. So it's probably gummed up. But it's got a battery. It's got the electric start, so this is the better one. It's not locked up. So I thought, well, let's see if it works with the electric start. So battery's dead, so I got my NOCO out. I hook my NOCO to it, turn it on, and of course the battery is totally dead. So I gotta hit the bypass so I can get it to, there we go. See once it starts percolating, that means it's charging. So let me hit the key, nothing, dead. So I got Mr. Test Light, hook one to ground. And now I'm gonna go to the one single terminal on the solenoid. This is a 
three post solenoid because the way it works is it grounds. Now let me turn the key and if the light lights up, that means I'm getting power to the solenoid. Okay, lights lighting up, so that means the solenoid's bad, so I'm gonna have to put a solenoid on it. And then I don't like this battery they got on here. These are kind of expensive batteries. So I'm gonna make a different battery mount and I'm gonna put a regular standard tractor battery on there that you can get anywhere. And then I'll have to get it running. But, you know, it is, it's got some nice features, this thing. It's kind of, I don't know, some things on it are kind of not made very well for the money they get. So you take them four knobs off and you can pull the motor off. And then the motor, oh, oh man, it's just thing got wheels on it. So you can roll it around. You're supposed to be able to take this thing all apart and store it. So another thing I noticed was this was broken, this latch. So I had a latch laying around. This is kind of cheesy to hold that down. So I had a latch, put that on. And I was looking at these casters. These casters got bushings in here. And the bushings are supposed to have a lip on there. But see, they put a cotter pin in there and no washer on top. So the cotter pin started digging into the flange and broke the flange off, see? So Rotary's got some bushings that for a skag that'll fit in here. So I'm gonna order me some four new bushings and then I'll put a, a washer on top and then put the cotton pin back in. So, stay tuned as I work on the doctor vac. Okay, I got the drain tile hose mounted. It fit on there good, and I drilled a couple of 1 8 holes and put some 1 8 pop rivets in it to hold it onto that flange. That should hold it okay. And then I did the same up here. Put two 1 8 pop rivets. So now I can take this off, see, and it comes off. Just like DR, I mean, the doctor intended. Then, I took the old battery out, and then I had uh, some old pallet racking rack and I cut a piece out of it and welded it on there and then I put the new solenoid on. And then I'll go over the wiring of the solenoid here a little bit with you. So you got your switch here. You got a wire coming in, going out. Here's your power wire from the battery goes in the switch, when you turn the key it makes a connection which sends 12 volts to this which makes this shift. Now if you notice, this wire here with the fuse, that's your charge wire because this, this motor's got an alt alternator on it. So it'll charge the battery while you're driving. And then this is your positive to the battery and then this is the power wire, this red wire going to the switch and then the other wire is the one going to solenoid. And then this has got to be grounded. If you had another post here, all you'd have to do to simply make it work is just take a ground wire. Just take a wire off of there and ground it. But this one grounds through the solenoid itself. And then I had a good used battery. So let's hook up the battery and see if it cranks over. Okay, I got the battery in, and I modified the existing battery hold-down bracket. And let's see if it'll crank over. Woo! Woo! Let's see if it'll start. Ah, a bunch of water coming out of the muffkin. Ain't gonna start. All right, so next I'm gonna have to go through the carburetor. And then I noticed this is bent, somebody hit something. 
So I'm gonna take this bracket off and straighten it, this piece of angle, and look at that. They put two screws in there and they got holes for two more, but they didn't put them in. I think I'm gonna add two screws at the top and bottom on each side to kind of stiffen it up. Gotta make it better. You know Terrell's always gotta make it better. All right, I went ahead and reinforced these metal angles on the corner of the door here. I drilled more holes and then I pop riveted it in a bunch of spots. The one on the other side was bent. I took it off and straightened it and then I had to cut it because it had stretched when it got bent. I had to cut it here and then re-weld it because it had gotten stretched. The metal stretched a little bit because it's kind of thin angle they put on there to get it to straighten up. And then I uh, put the new bushings in in the caster wheels here. Now, the doctor, or DR, they wanted $10 a piece for them bushings. And they're one inch by inch and a quarter bushings. One inch inside diameter, inch and a quarter outside diameter. So they're almost the same bushings they use on bobcats and skag mowers for the caster wheels. On the old walk behind mowers. So, Rotary had them. Part number 5707. And they were only $3.30 a piece. And the Bobcat number is 48053-2A. So if you got one of these doctor vacs, you want to change out them bushings, you can get them cheaper. But one thing I had to do, I had to take my little angle sander with a, with a barrel sander on it, my little angle thing, and I had to open up the bushings a little bit to get it to come through because they were a little snug. And when I looked them up on DR's website, they even said that they were one inch ID by inch and a quarter OD. But I had to sand them to get them to fit. And then I added a, a one inch stainless steel washer to the top. You know, there's grease fitting on there, so I greased it and I greased the wheels. So we got that all straightened out. So now, let's see if we can get the motor started. Whoa, look at, woo, look at that. Man, that's pretty nasty. I see somebody was taking care of their expensive equipment. You know what bottles my mind? You spend all this money on something and you don't even take care of it. You must have money to burn some of these people. Yeah. So I'm gonna hit it with a little carb spray. Let's see if we can get it to start. problem so let's dig into that probably got water in it because I saw water coming out of the muffkin all right let me get a half inch socket and drop the bowl. You can see it's kind of corroded in there. You can tell there's been water had gotten in there. Well, at least it popped. All right, I went and got my wrench. You ever hear of ever ready batteries? Well, I'm never ready. Always gotta stop and pick up the tools. Not like these other guys. Oh, look at that, that's water. You can tell that's water. 
Yeah, it's full of water. You can see, it doesn't soak into the concrete, it kind of stays on top. If it was gas, it'd soak in. Oh, yeah, look at that. Isn't that nice? Isn't that pretty? Is there gas in this thing? Well, it ain't coming out. Needle's probably stuck. All right, well, I have to pull the carburetor off. Pull the fuel line off. Probably gonna have to replace it. There we go. Oh yeah. So I might as well fold the tank. Full of water. These are 10 millimeter and I grabbed a 3.8. 10 millimeter. Never ready, man. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. See, now that's gas. You can see the difference. See how the gas soaks in and the water stays on top. Well, we'll clean that out. Now, was that 3 8 or 10 millimeter? I wish they'd make up their mind. 10. Oh, isn't that pretty? Look at that. Look at all that white. Looks like paint. Looks like cottage cheese. Or baby puke. Looks like baby spit up. Baby spit up again. Pull the pin out. Well, at least the needle wasn't stuck in there. I'm gonna replace the seat. Dig the seat out. Now I gotta get all that nastiness out of there. I'm gonna take it over to the parts washer and wash that off. First I'll blow it off with some shop air, get most of it off, and then I'll wash it. this in my blast cabinet and I'm gonna blast that calcium or whatever that white stuff is I'm gonna blast it off now I had one the other day I did on a log splitter where I couldn't get the float off the needle was stuck in there and I didn't have another carburetor to put on it and I didn't have time to buy one because the guy wanted to use the log splitter so I thought what do I got to lose I'll put it in the blast cabinet and blast it and I did and Cleaned it real good, put it back on, and worked just fine. See, all nice and pretty clean now. You can tell it's pitted, because that water started to corrode it. So now I'll spray it out real good with some carb spray and we'll put a needle and seat in it. Might have to put a new float bowl on it if I can't get that one cleaned up. Put some fresh gas in it and see if it'll start. Okay, see the big hole? I know you got two tubes in there. The one with the big hole in it is the main nozzle. Now I took the choke out so you could see it. That's the one that runs up through the middle. That little brass tube. You run a wire through it. You 
You want that to be clear. That's your main nozzle. Or you could spray carb spray through it and watch it. Just make sure you got some glasses on. That stuff will want to spray back at you. So now we'll go ahead and put the, I'm gonna blow it off again and then we'll go ahead and put the needle and seat in. New bowl gasket. Okay, here's the needle and seat. Part number 398188 is the Briggs number. This is a rotary 155. Now if you notice, it's got a little groove on one side of the seat. And the other side's smooth. The smooth side is where the needle goes. So unlike Tecumish, who has a tool to install the seat, Briggs carburetors, there's a little step down at the bottom. So they want you to use the shank of a drill bit. This is a 3 16 drill bit. So what I do is I put the seat, try to balance the seat on top of the drill bit, and then you'll see the ridge, and then carefully, see it's a little tricky, because if you try to drop it down in there, it usually flips over on you. Be nice if they made a tool. that would hold it. There we go. I just want to make sure it didn't flip on you. It's in there. There's no groove sticking up because I've dropped them in before and got lucky and then other times. And I'm going to hit it with a little penetrating oil, little drop, and then we're going to push it in. Seat it. Seat it into that little step that's at the bottom. It's similar to a Tecumish one, but I've tried using that Tecumish tool on it and it doesn't work too well. Then the new needle and the float. Hook the needle onto the float. Put your pin in, then we're going to check our float height. Good float height. Look at that, nice and level. Now, if it's too high, you don't have the seat seated right. You got to get it seated down in there. And if it's still too high, you may have to bend the float down, and in order to do that, you gotta, I use a heat gun and heat it up. But you gotta be careful, because if you melt a hole in the float, then you ruined it. But this one's fine. And then we'll put on the new bowl gasket. Which I use a wall for a one. It's a lot cheaper than the Briggs one. And then the bowl was good. I was able to salvage the bowl. And then of course the bowl nut is the main jet. So we want to make sure that's clean. All right, now the bowl nut is also the main jet. There's a little tiny hole down the middle of it. And then there's a cross drilled hole. That's where the gas comes in and then gets sucked through the middle, goes through that nozzle. And it's got letters on it. Those letters determine what size the jet is. So just don't take for granted that they're all the same. I'm gonna take my wires. Which these are torch tip cleaners because they're like little files. And you want to find one that's going to go down the center of the hole. 
so you can rot it out. Now you could scratch it a little bit, it ain't gonna hurt it, you ain't gonna change the the way it runs that much, as long as you're not filing it like you're trying to get out of jail. Try to find one that fits in there pretty close to the size. Because if you got a little bit of scale on there, that'll change the way it runs because it's closing it up. And if you got a little wire brush, you can brush it off. Or if it's really bad, you can put it in a blast cabinet. I've done that before. And then spray it out real good blow it out. Now remember I took the choke out too so I could show you the nozzle. So just in case you want to know how to do that, it's pretty simple you just pull on it. There's just little tabs. Some people don't know they go oh how'd you take that out? And I go you just pull on it. It's just little tabs that lock it in. So just make sure you get it, the tabs in the right. And then check it, of course, make sure it opens and closes. Now this gasket looks good, but maybe you want to replace your gasket, so I'll get you that gasket number right after I get done tightening this nut down. All right, I made up a little test stand because we like to test these carburetors before we put them on. A lot of times people come in the shop and give us a carburetor to rebuild, and we like to make sure it's not going to leak when they get it home. So I made up a little test stand so we could test it before you go putting it on and finding out it leaks, and then you got to take it back off. And it's real simple. It's just a hose hooked to a gas tank. Sometimes we put them up there to test them and we forget about them. Come in the next day and it's like, oh, okay, it's good. It hasn't leaked, sat there all night. Sometimes we put them up here, let them sit for five or ten minutes and we come back and gas is leaking out of it. So we always like to test them. Handy dandy little test tool. Very simple. Everything's simple if you think about it. Okay, this is a little manifold block that goes here, and there's a gasket on each side. I'm going to reuse the ones on here because they still look good to me. But if you want to replace them, 692-555. Almost sounds like a phone number. 692-555. So there's some crud in here. I want to get that out, see? Because this is an air-cooled engine. And this is the cooling fins. So you want to check that. Because if these are plugged up, it ain't going to cool. And you're going to blow a head gasket. So check that. And if it's really bad, you have to pull that cover off. Alright, now look out. Watch your eyes. You ever hear that expression, watch your eyes? Just before somebody gets to do something, watch your eyes. Now how can you watch your eyes? They're in your head. You have to pop them out of your head to watch your eyes. All right, hook that little spring in. That little spring just kind of helps to take any kind of slop out of the rod. In case there's any play in the rod, that's all it does. And I'm reusing this gasket, so there's one on each side. Watch your eyes. Watch your eyes. Yeah, here, let me poke my eyeballs out of my head, and then I'll lay them on the table, and I'll watch them. It's got a Torx, Torx head in the center. 
or 10 millimeter. Sometimes it's 3 8, sometimes it's 10, that's 3 8. What did I do? Oh, here it is. So many different sizes. Stick with one size. Look up the fuel line. Now somebody's been messing with this thing because there's supposed to be a plastic cover that goes on here. And that's missing, and I noticed two of the bolts in the back were missing. So I'm gonna have to go out in the junkyard. I think I got some of these motors junk and scrounge me up them parts. All right, turn on the dinosaur juice. Put the choke on. Cross your fingers. Because I know a lot of people always say, oh, you sandblasted that carburetor. You just ruined that carburetor, Terrell. I don't think I ruined it. We're gonna find out if it starts. I like how people always leave these comments in my videos, like on the, the solenoid video on how to add a solenoid to another starter. Oh, that ain't gonna work. That's physically, and I show you, it works. And they tell me it ain't gonna work. Knucklehead. And then we're gonna have to get a mower. I wanna hook it to a mower, and then we're gonna go out and suck some leaves with it. How do you like them apples? This is the tractor we're gonna hook the doctor vac to. But first I gotta make a bracket to hook the vac to. So I went out my scrap pile, and I found this piece of metal that I saved from something. And then I'm gonna mount it to these four bolts here and, and the hitch. So I marked it off and I drilled the holes in it and then these are the holes that the vac is gonna mount to and then I have... Sounds like money. Okay, the call's over. Guy dropping off generator for repair. So I'm gonna secure the vac to this plate with these pins that I saved from another mower. See, I save everything. These little little hardware things come in handy. And then I gotta mount this to the mower deck. Now this is the only one I had. Now this is just because we're gonna test it. You know, so this is temporary. Just so we could test the vac and show you how it works. So I'm just going to temporarily, I already drilled two holes in there. I'm just going to temporarily screw that to there. So let me go ahead and mount the bracket and mount the, the wagon, the Dr. Vac wagon to the back of the mower. Okay, I got the wagon mounted to the back of the tractor. There's my bracket and my pins. And I got a little hitch pin in there. These are little pins off of uh, MTD that held the front mower uh, deck bracket on. But you can use bolts. You could take half inch bolts and drill a hole in them. You know, you can run them all the way through. And then I temporarily mounted that shoe to the deck. And then if I was gonna permanently mount this to this tractor, you know, I'd shorten up this hose. So it wouldn't sag like that. But uh, I don't want to cut that hose because whoever buys this 
may need that extra length and then I would have cut it off because this is my tractor that I'm selling so let's take it out and uh, see how well it works I'm coming out so let's get this vacuum started let's start it let's start it Let him know this ain't the space shuttle, it's a lawnmower. 